My name is Jeff McNamara and I'm the ACE science teacher here at Melrose High School for a program that I wrote for our higher achieving students in science. The heart of the program really is about connecting scientists and students to get the students to look at real world data to work with, to experience the environments that scientists work in and engineers as well. So to try and get away from just textbook or internet based science learning. To not only do science but to meet scientists and to see what they do and where they do it. It's moving up in this direction about eight, eight centimetres a year and the event actually occurred just up here. It was a 6.1 I think earthquake. Again, your rider, can you just click on that for me? Bottom left. Terrific. So this is the north of Australia here, Papua New Guinea is here, and that's where the earthquake occurred, just a little bit to the north east of East Timor here. So that's the earthquake, 6.4 magnitude, which occurred 20 kilometres under the ground, not at risk of producing a tsunami or anything like that. I remember receiving an email a number of years ago saying that the scientist, who I'd never met before, and that was Dr Natalie Balfour, was looking for a school to uh, accommodate a seismometer and I just knew that the addition of a seismometer was perfectly in line with the sort of things we were doing with ACE Science. Cut a long story short, half an hour later I was talking to Natalie on the phone and then shortly after that we'd agreed that Melrose would be the pilot school for the Australian Seismometers in Schools Network. So Melrose was um, responded very quickly to our emails that went out asking for pilot schools, probably within about 20 minutes, with a lot of enthusiasm. And the teacher there, Jeff McDermara, was very keen on how the seismometer could fit in with the program that he was running as well and just setting up, which is his ACE science program. So we found there was mutual benefit for both the school and for us to participate um, and to make them a pilot school. It took about three months or so to identify, and we had to do the site testing to make sure that it was a suitable location for the seismometer. I think it took about six hours to dig the hole through some pretty hard packed clay. Uh, get the formwork and the concreting done, get all the um, infrastructure in place to get the data out to ANU where it can be archived and then made available worldwide. So there were a lot of things we simply had not done before and we had to find out how to do it. The launch was a, a milestone of the program and basically marked um, going from a pilot stage where we installed two instruments in schools around Canberra to then accepting requests um, and expressions of interest from schools around Australia. So um, leading up to the launch we had to install the seismometers into two schools and get them all up and running and working and sort of iron out any problems that we came across so that uh, we were ready for the influx of the applications that we got um, after the launch. The launch was very, very spectacular. It was a special moment because it was the first time that a public school had had such an expensive piece of infrastructure in place. We were a pilot for the rest of the country to show other schools how it could be done. We had Senator Kate Lundy launch the seismometers and school network right here at Melrose High School. So it was a pretty important day for us. There's several ways that the program can benefit students and it's up to the schools how they want to engage their students with working with the seismometer. We provide resources to the schools on how they can look up data and analyse the data and so that's one way. They've all, some schools have made activities around the data so how to locate earthquakes and some of the challenges that come with locating earthquakes and then you've got some schools who have students doing projects on the data. So this is the case at Melrose High School where we have mentored students. It's really um, great for a scientist to get out of their lab and behind, out from behind their desk and interact with students who have an interest in science. And um, I had the first year there was a group of four boys who did a, a project on characterising the noise at the site which was very good for us to get an understanding of, of what kind of noise is at schools. And then another student um, a year later 
did a project on locating earthquakes in the Canberra region. I had two mentors, um, Dr. Michelle Salmon and Dr. Natalie Balfour. I used the data from the seismometer to detect the earthquakes that happened in the local region and I located where those earthquakes occurred. Which was also really, really interesting to us. What, what more could we pick up by adding the extra stations that we had in schools? Uh, there was that big earthquake out at Wee Jasper just last year or the year before and that was picked up on the seismometer at Melrose. When you locate earthquakes it's good to have a broad um, observation of them. So if the earthquake happens in one place you want to have stations um, surrounding the earthquake or even on top if you can um, to get good observations so that you can kind of triangulate where the, day, where the, the event was. And um, so by having these extra stations, we have more observations, therefore we can have more accurate earthquake locations and sometimes pick up earthquakes that previously couldn't be located due to lack of observations. Look, it's really about representing what, from a school and a student perspective, it's representing what does the seismometer actually do for a school environment. And you've already spoken to one of my students, Charlotte, who did a very, very important project looking at different earthquakes in the Canberra region. So it ranges from that through to students just having an awareness uh, that these earthquake events are happening all over the world and that we can actually pick up the vibrations of those events here. So more general knowledge. And so what we're doing is representing that to the scientific community and the politicians. These seismometers absolutely help with organisations such as Geoscience Australia. In fact, uh, Geoscience Australia has told us that they use these instruments, or the data recorded from these instruments, on a regular basis to help locate some of their events and um, it really helps with their monitoring. So we're really excited that they're using the data so regularly. I first found out about the Australian Seismometers in Schools program working here at Geoscience Australia. I was a duty seismologist at the time working on the Australian Tsunami Warning Centre and we find out about new seismic stations coming online in Australia. And as part of that, we found out about the Seismometers in Schools program and we're interested in getting the stations to use the data here for our own earthquake alerts. We use a lot of these stations um, in a lot of our earthquake locations these days, especially uh, for the smaller events and sometimes for blasts. I've got a blast up here on the screen that I've located using a Seismometers in Schools station and we regularly use these also for larger strain events where you want a group of stations surrounding the earthquake to get a good handle on the amount of energy released during the earthquake, the seismometers in school stations can fill in some of those gaps for us. So we had over 125 applicants and we had 40 instruments that we could allocate to schools. So we had quite a lot of interest from around Australia. It's useful in two regards, both for um, seismic analysis of earthquakes happening around Australia and around the world, but also to educate uh, people in, in seismicity of Australia and the world. I did a bit of seismicity in university but to get this job here as a duty seismologist I was trained on the job. There are not many trained seismologists in Australia so the more education we get out there about seismology the better. Are we going to trigger every student's fascination with science with one instrument? No, I don't think that's very realistic but it is certainly a valuable component of that and we're very lucky because they're very expensive, these machines as well, and the technology that goes behind installing it and of analysing the data is not within the normal reach of a, of a school. And so it's, it's definitely a very important component of connecting students with the real world. There's no question that it does add to their motivation to learn science. It's been very successful and, and obviously a lot of people are engaging with both using the data and the, the school side where they collect the data. The experience has been fun and interesting and I have learnt a lot more about earthquakes and seismology as a result of it.